Hello everyone, my name is Mike and welcome to VertiSim. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome and thank you for clicking on the video. And if you are a returning viewer and a subscriber, thank you very much for your support to the channel. In this video, I will show you my renewed VR settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. For these settings to work perfectly, we need to download some extra software. These are the latest NVIDIA DLSS driver 3.6, DLSS Swapper to change the driver in Microsoft Flight Simulator and DLSS Tweaks to fine tune the DLSS driver. First we have to download the latest NVIDIA DLSS DLL driver file. You can click here on the Tech Power Up site, click download and save it to a destination that you can easily find back. While you're here you can also download the latest NVIDIA GeForce driver 555.1.86 551.86 That's the game ready driver. You can download it from here or from the NVIDIA app or just download it directly from the NVIDIA website. Next we have to download the DLSS swapper. Come on the website, click on latest and here you will find the installer or the portable zip if you don't want to install anything on your computer. The last piece of software that we need is DLSS Tweaks. You can download it here at Nexus Mods. It's from the developer Emus. Make sure you have an uh, account on Nexus Mods. Just register, it's totally free. And then download the latest one from 28 September 2023, version 0.200.8.2. Now save the unzipped file of the DLSS 3.6 and DLSS Tweaks into a separate folder on your desktop. Now we open DLSS Swapper. And you will see that Microsoft Flight Simulator comes with version 2.4.12.0. If you want to update it, here it says 3.600. And I see it already updated in DLSS Swapper since the uh, 3.6 version came out just a few days ago. But we'll see that we have to download it. So we cancel out here. We go to our libraries, go to 3.6, download 3.6, and now it's there. If you won't download it, and then you will use the, uh, the files you just downloaded, you go to import, uh, find the mouse, click on the file, open, import, and you will also see, click OK, so now we got a 3.6 that's downloaded and we got a 3.6 that's imported from the file. We go back to the library, we click here. Which one do we want to use? We want to use the imported or the downloaded version. I'll click on this one and I click swap. And now we can see it's updated to version 3.6.0.0. Now we can close DLSS Swapper. The next step is to open DLSS Tweaks. We open the file or the folder and we will find several files here. First you have to do is enable NVIDIA Signature Override. Double click, you get a warning. Click Run and it will run. And then you have to click Yes. You get this, we click Yes. And another one, we click OK. Now we can click on the DLSS Tweaks config.exe file. And it will show us a warning that the game exe file is not found. And it looks like DLSS Tweaks config tool has been launched outside of the game directory. No exe found. So we have to copy the tweaks into the uh, game folder first before configure it. You can let config tool copy the necessary files via the copy to game folder command on the top right. So let's do that and we'll click OK. So now we've opened the DLSS Tweaks config tool. First, we have to copy the files to the game folder. Now a new window opens and from here we have to find the uh, Windows game folder. For me that's Program Files, Windows Apps, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And here we're gonna get select folder. A new notice will appear and it is copying the following DLSS tweaks files. So that is your 
die LSS driver file, die LSS tweaks ini, en die komt weer tot action. Klik yes, and then it will ask if you want to replace the files in the destination. I say yes, and it will copy. And then it will say file copied to game folder. Do you want to close down the config tool and configure a new install? Say yes. And a new window of the config tool will open again. If you're not able to use DLSS swapper or copy the files yourself to the uh, game folder because you don't have access to the game folder, you can use the button up here, the add DLL override. Once you use that folder, that button, you can point it to the driver file you downloaded from the tech power up site and use that one instead of the one in the game folder. DLSS tweaks will use that driver file to set your tweaks. Now we can change some settings here in the config tool. The first part we're gonna skip. We're gonna go over to DLSS quality levels. Change this one from false to true. Then we go down to ultra quality and we're gonna set 0.85. Now we go to the presets and we're gonna choose, this one was on default, we're gonna choose preset F and also for ultra quality we choose preset F. We hit save and now copy to game folder. Select folder, select yes. Now you can close the config tool and start up Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you made it this far in the video, feel free to give the video a thumbs up and or subscribe to the channel. This will help to get the video out to as many people as possible and to grow the channel. Now let's go to the graphic settings in the sim. In here, we get the settings for PC and for VR. First of all, we want to set in the PC version the global rendering quality to low end because we don't want the sim to render a high quality image in the background while we're using VR. It's gonna cost performance. So now we go to VR. Here we're gonna set anti-aliasing to NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution. And then the NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution, it's either ultra quality, that's the 0.85 that we set, or DLAA. Then choose the sharpening of 30. And here are the rest of my settings, but this all depends on your own system. You can see I have my shadow maps at 4096. That's 4K shadows. That's For me, that's better shadows. Even at the ray march reflection to ultra, so I lowered some other settings to get the ultra ray march reflections it all is personal preferences one important thing to show to you is that you have to set the anisotropic filtering to 16 times in the sim some people say set this one to zero and set it in the nvidia control panel to uh, 16 times you have to set it to 16 times in the sim as well and i will show you that in a second then you hit apply and we go back and then we're gonna jump into VR. Okay, so we're now in VR in the uh, Kaos DA42. And I changed the microphone to the uh, uh, the uh, HP Reverb mic. So it's easier for me to talk to you. So as you can see, everything looks really sharp, clear. Um, a lot of clarity and it's it's pretty smooth I can also read the instruments really good because I'm using a one-to-one -one scale it's not downscaled and upscaled again it's one-to-one -one. so this is the uh, the full resolution that I get now in the headset and as I talked earlier to you uh, about the anisotropic filtering, when we look down the runway here, we can see the end of the runway really clear. Now let me change the anisotropic filtering to off, like 
many people say you have to switch it off in the sim and on in the uh, nvidia control panel so now let's go to general options and turn the 16 times to off apply go back resume look what it does to the runway i can't see the end of the runway anymore the grass and dirt on the sides there are bleeding through and you're gonna lose uh, the runway when you're flying and let me show you that when I'm using the drone cam so I'm taking the drone cam going around you, you can see it all the way in the back here look the beginning of the runway there you just place or the uh, where the arrows are the everything is bleeding through now I turn around and I go back up look look how the uh, the runway is disappearing and, uh, some speed in here go further up so when you approach you can't even see the runway i'm going further up further up it's just disappearing see this and i'm here i'm on a long final now where's the runway you can't see it now go back to the settings go back to 16 times for anisotropic filtering apply go back resume and there's the runway see that so don't switch it off in the sim keep it in the nvidia control panel at 16 and in the sim at 16 times otherwise you can't find your runway anymore Okay, back to the cockpit. Here we are. And I'm recording this and I've got a lot of uh, software open. So I don't think I'll have uh, many, uh, <laughs> many FPS. It's gonna be very low, I think. But uh, let's give it a try. And you can see what it is from the air. Still very, very smooth, no stutters. And I know this is in a very, not very high demanding area. But because I'm uh, recording and have many programs open while I'm making this video, I gotta say, I can see the wires, there's no shimmerings. This looks really great. Let's get the gear up. A little bit of climb power here. Really beautiful. Let's make a right hand turn. And you can clearly see all the trees. They're not overly sharpened. And this is even better than TAA guys. Really it is. Once you've tried this, TAA is... No, that's really bad. This looks so natural. I'm just gonna fly over the airport. And this is really smooth. Beautiful, sharp. I can read the instruments, really good. So these settings together with auto FPS, I think it's the holy grail for uh, VR settings. This really does it. The latest DLSS driver, 3.6 DLSS tweaks, preset F, you can't go wrong. And if you can't get the FPS you need, you can always go to uh, ultra quality and quality and both settings will have the uh, DLAA anti-aliasing on top of it. Bye guys.
that was for the settings. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to fly a little bit more now. And thanks for watching. And if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 3000 subscribers. And the channel is only growing and growing. So thanks again. And see you soon in the next video. This was Mike, 30sim. And take care.